Our next speaker is Teresa Chafin, and her talk is titled, A Beautiful Day for an Opera. Teresa. At 9.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, 1951, families across America gathered around their televisions for the live premiere of John Carlo Minotti's new opera. A Mall in the Night Visitors was the first and most successful television opera ever commissioned by the NBC Opera Theater, and 23-year-old Fred Rogers was behind the scenes as assistant to the producer on that historic evening. He had sought any job in TV production and the Opera Theater hired him because he held a Bachelor of Music in Composition degree. Fred Rogers' first love was music and his first TV experience was producing opera. So it's no surprise that opera for broadcast was his favorite part of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Rogers and his collaborators produced 14 operas ranging from a 10 minute segment to a three episode 90 minute miniseries from 1968 to 1989. They were broadcast during the regular time slot of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, intended for preschoolers between two and six years old. The first opera was about babysitters, but grandparents, seat belts, cows, potato bugs, bubble sweaters, stars, and one very sad short-necked giraffe all proved creative <laughs> fodder for these charming operatic projects. Rogers put his composition training to good use, writing all the librettos and scores himself, just as he wrote the songs and scripts for all 900 episodes of the show. Short-sighted adults, including PBS executives, could see only the whimsy in these performances, but Rogers, as always, was speaking directly to children without speaking down to them. He took the opportunity to convey his trademark message of universal acceptance while also addressing issues such as loneliness, abandonment, race relations, and disability. He sought with these operas to strip opera of its classist overtones while also encouraging collaborative creativity from his pint-sized viewers. He framed each performance with brainstorming, rehearsal, and the admonition that they too could pretend an opera as a means of self-expression. In box after box at the Fred Rogers Center Archive, I found evidence of his success. Many parents write to say that the operas are their favorite episodes and even that their children did respond by writing an opera themselves. I'm the first musicologist to study Fred Rogers as a composer. I believe that no understanding of Rogers or his neighborhood can be complete without a sophisticated analysis of his music. Once, he changed his opening theme song. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for an opera. He was right, of course. Mr. Rogers is always right. It was a beautiful day for an opera. It always is. Thank you. <laughs>